Hi, I'm Morgan. I'm Harrison. This is Morgan, please, our budget travel vlog. And today we are in Paris. Paris? I thought this was a budget travel vlog. Uh, it is a budget travel vlog. Paris isn't exactly budget friendly. It can be. This is a budget travel guide for tons of free things to do in Paris. If I'm going to Paris, I want a full experience. I don't want to miss out on stuff just to be cheaper. Exactly, which is why I can never go to Paris. It's so expensive. It's not too expensive. You can see all the major sites and enjoy Paris the way you want without spending a ton of money. It's possible, it's feasible. We did it, you can do it, and we're about to show you how. First things first, where are you gonna stay? How are we in Paris for over two weeks without paying a cent for accommodation? We, we have sent it. So we're just gonna make this really, really brief for two reasons. One, is this kind of a unique situation, even though you could use our code and sign up for Trusted House Sitters for a good deal off. Uh, most people won't do that. Um, second off, we'll keep this really short because we talk about house sitting in a lot of our videos. So if you click on one of the top corners here, you can see some of our videos talking more about house sitting, how to do it, and our experience doing that. So with us being a budget travel channel, we are very transparent about what we spend and we like to tell the honest truth about all of that. So between vlogs uh, and during vlogs, you can see on the bottom right corner, there will be a little ticker that counts up every time we spend money so that you guys can get a good idea of how much it may cost to come where we go. So we're in Paris, we're on a budget, where to start? Let's start with some culture. So in Paris, there are a ton of free museums that you can visit. Here is a list of all of them. There are also other museums that you usually have to pay for, but for a lot of them, you can actually get in for free if you plan your trip right. On the first Sundays of every month, you can get in for free. So the Palace of Versailles and the Louvre are two museums that you can get in for free on the first Sundays of the month from October to March. So that was incredibly wrong because Morgan spoon fed me the information, but I actually looked it up and the Palace of Versailles is free on the first Sundays from November to March, not October. And the Louvre is free on the first Saturday of each month from 6 p.m. to 9.45 p.m. However, if you're not here on the first Saturday or Sunday of each month, we still have a way for you to get in for free, which we'll reveal towards the end of the video. But today is the first Sunday of the month, so we're gonna visit a few of our favorite museums, starting with Musée d'Orsay. Feel free to make fun of my French in the comments. <laughs> Say was once a railway station built in 1898 to 1900, but now hosts the world's largest collection of Impressionist and post-Impressionist masterpieces. It's got the likes of Van Gogh, Monet, Manet, Renoir, Cézanne, uh, Courbet, all types of famous guys that I learned about in my college art history class. So finally, my degree is coming in handy for once in my life. <laughs> Give me your honest opinion. Does this look like Michael Cera? That museum was amazing. So Musée d'Orsay, I know I'm saying it wrong, but it's one of the biggest museums in Paris. And it's so great that once a month, you get to go totally for free. If you, by the way, are an EU citizen under 26, then you get to go in for free anytime. And if you're under 18 from any country, you can go in for free. But it was so cool to see all the art that I studied. And uh, I mean, I was only in one art history class for one semester, but <laughs> there was that one Doctor Who episode where they bring Van Gogh to the museum to see his works. And it's pretty heart-wrenching and we got to live that. Let's go to another one we're going to go to Musée, Musée de Cluny, Medieval Museum. We'll talk more about that in one second. Mm. 
So a half hour walk away from Museo d'Orsay is the Medieval Museum or Museum de Cluny at some point that. This is not on the top of everybody's list when it comes to the free Sunday museums, but that's one of the best reasons to come here. There's like no line. The main reason you would come here is to see the set of six tapestries called The Lady and the Unicorn. So it's one of the most important works of medieval art. And they were actually featured in the Gryffindor common room in Harry Potter, just saying. So they represent the five senses. And the last one is kind of up for interpretation. My only heart's desire is kind of what it translates to, but it's definitely worth going in on free Sunday. If you're kind of overwhelmed by these big, huge museums, it's a nice one to just go in, kind of see the tapestries, not feel so overwhelmed. It's a smaller one. I think that's nice. It's a nice contrast. So that's that, let's go to the next place. Because the medieval museum is nearby Notre Dame, we figured we'd come take a walk over to Notre Dame. And yes, of course, it was a horrible tragedy earlier this year and you can no longer go into Notre Dame, but you can still see the outside of it. A lot of it is still intact, it looks beautiful, and I still think it's worth coming to visit. And around Notre Dame, besides going to see that, there is, it's in the Latin Quarter of Paris. It's a beautiful area with lots of little bookshops and, and still tiny side streets. It's a really beautiful area to come, get some art, um, get some books, I don't know. It's a really beautiful area. So we were gonna check out St. Chapelle today, but we're not including it in this video. And the reason for that is because we actually waited in line because online it said that it was gonna be free on the first Sunday of every month, but that's actually not true. We got there and at the end of the line, they had signs that specifically said today's date, it's not free. And so I guess they're limited on the months that they do, just like the Louvre is. It's gonna cost eight euro per person. So we decided to not go in. Crepes are not cheap when you're around tourist areas in France. So this was three euro, which is a lot, and I probably wouldn't recommend you doing that. If you step away from the tourist areas, maybe you can find something cheaper. I actually haven't, no matter where we go. They're always around three euro for like the base crepe without anything really good. Maybe 250 is like the lowest I've seen it, but I would recommend you go to this place called the Princess Crepe. We got like a cheesecake crepe the other day, and it was six euro, which is a lot, but it's got ice cream, it's got a literal piece of cheesecake in it, and like if you want to get a crepe with Nutella or something, that's like four or four fifty euro. So might as well go to princess crepe get it with ice cream get it with a piece of goddamn cheesecake for six euro you know and that can be like literally like your dinner or something it was so filling so that's what i recommend over just getting it from the side of notre dame where it'll be very expensive for not much next on to the soccer cook It's a bit of a hike to get up here, but you'll be rewarded with these fantastic views. This historic, beautiful basilica is one of the most visited monuments in Paris, and can you believe it? It's completely free all the time, every single day for anybody to go visit. So another huge reason to go to the Sacre Coeur is actually to check out its surroundings. So the Sacre Coeur is located in Montmartre, which is one of the most beautiful districts in Paris. There's limited development allowed in Montmartre, so it really retains its village-like feel. And when you're there, you're gonna see tons of art and artists, people trying to sketch you, selling their paintings. And the reason for that is because at the end of the 19th century, there were tons of famous artists who lived and worked and made paintings of Montmartre. Some of them included Van Gogh, Monet, Picasso, and Renoir. After checking out Montmartre, we're gonna go to our next recommendation 
recommendation of where you should go in Paris if you're on a budget but you want to enjoy the best that it has to offer. And this is kind of an unusual recommendation. You may have never heard of this place. Um, it is a mall, but hear me out, hear me out, okay? This is Galleries Lafayette and it is actually a huge tourist attraction in Paris. When you go in, you are greeted with this amazing art deco decor with an incredible dome. It is beautiful in there. It's like gilded, it's like a little castle. But the bigger reason that people flock to Galleries Lafayette is not just for the beautiful decor inside, but it has an amazing panoramic view over Paris. While in Paris, you must see the Arc de Triomphe. So you can actually pay to go in and go to the top, or you could just look at it from the outside, which is what most people do. If you're going to Paris and you're going for more than a week, I highly recommend these public transport cards. These transport cards are unlimited, meaning you can use them as many times as you want throughout a week, starting from Monday and ending on Sunday. You can use them on buses, trains, metros, anything within the Paris area. You do need ID photos for these cards as well. So if you are traveling internationally, just bring some extra ID photos that you used for your passport or if you didn't do that, don't fret. They have ID photo machines all over the place in France. Once you get your ID photos, you can go to a kiosk and you can purchase these cards. And like I said, they're unlimited use for any bus, metro, train, anything. And they last for a week until you want to recharge them again and just keep using them. They were a big money saver for us and I am so happy that we discovered them. So here we are at the Louvre. So we mentioned earlier in the videos that you cannot go into Louvre for free on the first Sunday of the month like the rest of the museums we went to uh, because of summertime. But there is another way you can get in if you are under 26. So actually, if you're in the EU, you can come here if you're under 26 anytime, I think. But if you're not in the EU, like us, we're from America, you can get into the Louvre for free if you're under 26 um, every Friday. Every Friday night, you can come for free. So here we are for free in the Louvre. Let's go see. So while everything in the Louvre was absolutely beautiful, I have to say the one underwhelming thing, which I didn't think would be, was the Mona Lisa. When you get into this room, it is super crowded. You can't get within 15 feet of the actual painting. And if you try to take a photo while walking out a little closer to it, there will be someone there that puts their hand in front of your lens and it did happen to me. If you were hoping to get a very close look at the Mona Lisa, it is never gonna happen. But as for the rest of the museum, all of the artwork is pretty accessible to everyone. What we're looking at right now is Napoleon III's apartments. Back in the day, the Louvre was actually a palace for kings. Looking at all of this stuff, it is so ridiculously ornate and decorated. You think this stuff existed so many years ago, and it's like, how? How, how does all of this crazy architecture exist when they didn't have such incredible technology that we have today? It's so mind-blowing to see this in person.
Of course, when in Paris, you must go see the Eiffel Tower. So you can pay to go up to the top. If you're not claustrophobic or scared of heights, you can go up in the elevator there to the top of the Eiffel Tower. But most people choose to just hang out around it, have a picnic, hang out in front of the Eiffel Tower, go underneath, check it out without having to pay. Besides, the best Instagram photos come from outside of the tower and not up it anyway. <laughs> was have a picnic overlooking the Eiffel Tower. I actually don't recommend you do this and I have two reasons for that. One, the biggest reason is that there are people coming around trying to sell you beer, wine, or flowers. They are constant. In the last half an hour we've had to say no, we don't want to buy anything maybe 20 times. They put that shit right up to your face like a flower right up to your face or like wine and they won't go away. If you ignore them, they'll just stand there. It's better because Harrison's here, but I've watched them do it to girls who are alone and they just stand there, smile at you, stare at you down until like you finally acknowledge them. Even then they might just still stand there. Oh, also they have these birds that they fly around the air. These like little, um, I don't know, toys that go in the air and it, it just, it hits somebody. Like we watched it hit some girl. And the second reason I don't recommend eating here is because there's tons of people which doesn't usually bother me. Actually, the crowds in popular places don't usually bother me, but only thing that does bother me is the smoke. People in Paris smoke a lot, and there's lots of smoke, so um, there is like, cigarette smoke going right in my face a lot of time we're eating. I have a solution, because I know I was really looking forward to eating here, like on the grass around the Eiffel Tower, having a picnic, and uh, it says to do that in like Rick Steve guidebooks and stuff, and I still think you shouldn't eat out. I think you should still like buy your own wine and cheese and bread and eat at a picnic, but I would recommend doing it on the Seine River, on the banks of the Seine, maybe near, I don't know, somewhere in Notre Dame, walk, find your own little place. You won't have so many people around. You can watch the boats go by. Maybe you can get it, plan it right so you can see the Eiffel Tower behind you still. Or maybe just find like a rare secluded spot here on the grass somewhere. But so I recommend a picnic, but if being berated doesn't bother you, then you can still come here. If it does, then just have picnic somewhere else in Paris. Like on the banks of the Seine would be a way better spot to do that. So insider tip. <laughs> wraps up our video there's so many free things to do in Paris it's not just somewhere you can only go if you're very very rich I hope we kind of prove that today it's an extremely walkable city there's tons of things to do for free if you just know how to go about it I hope you enjoyed so if you guys are interested in supporting us you can check out our patreon be sure to hit subscribe and to like, like the button. video <laughs> thank you see you in the next one bye bye